It was in the early days of my faith. I was telling a friend of mine that if she accepts Jesus as her savior, he will forgive all her sins and take her to heaven when she dies. She told me that even though she is not a religious person, her aunt was, and when she was about to die, her face lit up and she said, "My God, my Bhagwan is here. He has come to take me home." Then she closed her eyes and died peacefully. My friend made it sound like her God also can take his followers to heaven, and no one needs Jesus in order to do that. I didn't know how to respond. I felt stumped. Years passed by. One day, I was watching a video about an atheist professor who had a near-death experience. In that video, his spirit left his body. Then he heard some sweet voices calling out to him. Howard, come quickly. Howard, come out here. Howard, come quickly. Come with us. Howard, we've been waiting for you. Let us take a listen as he explains. I left the room, which well, we had a very long journey. And as we walked, they stayed around me and kept moving me on, and it kept getting darker and darker. Um, they were becoming more and more openly hostile to me. First, they were sort of syrupy sweet to get me to go with them, and then when I was going along with them, it was like, "Hurry up, keep moving, you know, shut up, stop asking." You know, it started getting more um, ugly. And so we get into complete darkness. I'm absolutely terrified. I said, "I'm not going to go with you any further." They said, um, "You're almost there." And we started to fight. I, just, I was trying to get away from them. They were pushing and pulling at me. And um, there are now a lot of them. What originally had been like a handful now was. Since it was darkness, I would make hundreds or thousands. I don't. I mean, I have no idea. And they're playing with me. You know, clearly they could have just destroyed me if they wanted to. They didn't want to destroy me. What they wanted to do was they wanted to inflict pain on me. Because they derived pleasure isn't the right word, but they derived derived satisfaction out of the pain that I experienced. So they were like tearing. And biting, um, tearing with their fingernails, scratching, gouging, ripping, and then uh, biting, and trying to defend myself, trying to fight them off, trying to get away from them. But this, it's like being um, in a beehive. There's just hundreds of them all over me, and I eventually was just laying on the ground there, all ripped up. Pain everywhere, inside, outside, and even harder to bear than the physical pain was the emotional pain of what had just happened to me—the utter degradation that I just experienced. I heard my voice. It wasn't somebody else's voice. It wasn't the voice of God or anything. It was my voice, and I heard it speak, but I didn't speak it. So whether it's the voice of my conscience or I don't know what it was, it was just. But I distinctly heard my voice say, "Pray to God." And so I thought to myself, "I don't believe in God. I pray to God." I can't remember how to pray. And then the people who were around me, if I every time I'd like mention God, these people who had attacked me and beaten me, every time I mentioned God, it was as if mentioning God was throwing boiling water on them. They would shriek. They would scream. They would yell, and in worse profanity than than anything I've ever heard in this world. The other thing that was happening was that they they、um, couldn't bear to be around me talking about God. It was so it was so painful for them to hear about God that they kept backing away, backing away, backing away. And so I had a sense that I could push them away by talking about God.、And、eventually, I realized that they're gone, and I'm alone. So I called out、Jesus! into the darkness, "Jesus, please save me!" Please save me! And he came. He came. First, there was a tiny little 
speck of light in the darkness and very rapidly got bright. And the light became so bright that um, if it were in this world, it would have, uh, it would have consumed me. I, it, it just would have fried me to a crisp. But it wasn't at all hot or dangerous there. The light just came upon me. And he reached down. He was in this light. And he reached down out of this light and gently started to pick me up. And in his light, I could see that I was gore and filth and wounds all over. And was, I looked like roadkill. And he's gently putting his hands underneath me and, and very tenderly picking me up. And as he's touching me, everything just goes away. All the wounds, all the pain, all the dirt, just, uh, it just kind of like um, evaporated away. And I'm like whole and healed. And inside, uh, just filled with his love, which I wish I could be more articulate about. It's so frustrating not being able to tell people about it because, you know, it's the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. I mean, it's, it's like the, it's the everything. And we're moving towards a world of light and, um, and we begin to converse and he was talking and telling me things and he brought over some angels and we went over my life from beginning to end. And what they wanted to show me in my life was what I had done right and what I had done wrong. What they were trying to convey to me in a nutshell was my whole purpose of my existence had been to love God, love my neighbor as myself. That's why I had been created. That's what I was in this world to, um, do, <coughs> to do and to learn. And I had failed. They told me that I had to come back and Howard came back to life. While this is a wonderful testimony on the saving power of Jesus, what stood out the most to me in this whole episode was the degree of deception these spirits can portray. As I was watching this clip, my friend's story about her aunt in a deathbed flashed in my mind. The so-called God of hers had put on a show to deceive the rest of the family that had gathered around her. These are fallen angels that pose as God. Once they were in heaven and they have tremendous knowledge as compared to us. If we as humans know how to bait a fish by covering the fish hook with a juicy worm, how much more these fallen angels know as how to entice us to fall into the death traps. None of these gods in any of their holy books promised heaven to anybody. No one but Jesus paid the penalty for our sins. Today, Jesus stands at the door of everyone's heart and says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him. He also says that anyone who believes in him has eternal life. He doesn't force anyone, but the choices we make here will impact our eternity. I hope and pray that we all make the right choice. God bless you.